Hello, everyone. Here we are with Keegan Connor Tracy, uh, winner this year of uh, two awards in the Fantasy Film Festival. She won Best Director and Best Fantasy Film for your film, The Girl. So congratulations. Um, now, your film, uh, The Girl, is is it an alternate title or just like mirroring things, but well, using the French version as well? I, I, f I feel like it was like two worlds mirroring each other, you know, and that's why originally it was just called La Fille. And then I realized that even in Canada, people were not getting that right, uh, even in this bilingual nation. Uh, and so I just sort of, I, I thought it worked in terms of the mirroring of the two worlds and it, these two young girls. And uh, so it's really a, as much to do with language for people who are consuming the film as it was any kind of creative choice. We, we certainly don't want to give too much away. You know, we didn't show your whole film online. We just showed brief clips. Uh, it, it's a fantastic film, and it's a fantasy film, obviously. Um, we, you're mo more famously known as an actress. You've had a, a great career and done lots of genre work. Uh, so tell us about getting behind the camera. This is, is this new for you, or have you done it for a while? I think it's a long time coming. I had experimented a little bit with it before my kids were born. I had bought uh, what was then a state-of-the-art camera, PD100A, and it was like so expensive, and this fabulous camera and the housing and the tripods, and I bought all the stuff, and I was shooting all these. I wanted to shoot, like I shot a pilot for um, a food show, and I, I think by the time, you know, my, I would get busy working as an actor and then I would, you know, leave that behind to some degree. And I also was concerned about having two frustrating careers. There was almost no female directors. I mean, I've been doing this since I was in my early 20s and um, the amount of times I saw female directors was so rare that I guess it was just sort of like, you know, I talk about this a lot, the Gina Davis Institute for Gender Studies in the Media, and they say, if she can see it, she can be it. And I think I just didn't see it. And I, you know, eventually there came a time when I started to look at the, the overall landscape as a female, as an actress, as a woman who was in my 40s, and, and thinking, I better do something else. And also, and, and then once I started doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, why have I not been doing this all along? To, to have the kind of control creatively that you have to tell a story visually and with the colors and with the tone and with the shot. And um, it, it, it just is such a, a, a more complete way of telling a story than to be an actor and you just sort of pop in here and there and you get what they give you. And um, so I think it's been a long time coming, but my, my road to get there was not as direct as I might have liked. Yeah, and, and being in so many uh, productions, shows, and movies, you know, you absorb a lot, and uh, I'm sure you felt like a lot of times I would do this differently, and, and you just wanted to take the reins and make your own films. To some degree. Um, I also, I never realized how little power and ability to really finesse the story I had as an actor until I stepped on the other side of the camera and started hanging around with the crew guys and hanging around the camera and being like, what lens is that? And really paying attention, like going to the monitors and seeing what shots were up and why and, um, and, and just how much more layered and textured it is to be a filmmaker as opposed to just the person on the other side who has one job essentially. And while I, you know, obviously I love doing that job, um, just creatively, I think it's vastly more exciting to be a director. Originally, when I started making this film, I was like, what can I do without having to ask anybody for help? And so I wrote this film that essentially was something that was really small. And then having been in the film industry for so long, you know, I would make one call. My, the first call I made was to a friend of mine who works in locations to say, hey, do you think the foliage will be filled in on this date, you know, April, whatever. And mm -hmm. he, uh, the next thing I know, I had a DP and I had a crew and I had a <laughs> crane and I had, you know, so it just sort of took on a, a life of its own. And I think had I known that I might've made a different film, something like, I keep calling it my like lesbian black and white drug addict movie, you know, <laughs> uh, something much more like gritty and um, raw. But this is the film that came to me at the time that it came to me. And, and this is, uh, this is what we made. So now uh, is this like a, uh in terms of your film, have you floated it out to a lot of festivals? Uh, you know, I think I was, I was being conservative about festivals, I think, because I didn't want to spend, you know, $3,000 doing festivals. Although, you, you know, you end up racking up a lot of money doing so. Uh, I think also I didn't get that there were genre festivals when I first started sending this out. Uh, and I'm so glad that at least sort of halfway, three quarters of the way through, 
the budget that I'd allocated for it, I discovered festivals like yours that would really get a film like this. You know, it, that was a bit of a like newbie mistake on my part. Uh, I should have realized it's a fantasy film and um, that's where it should have been. And obviously uh, a festival like yours was able to recognize that. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. It had such good cinematography and uh, the production design. Even the little girls were great at acting and I could just tell that that was all the direction that you gave. Everything was coming out, so that's why you won Best Director. Is this the first you. thing you've ever directed, officially? Of that scale and in and, and sort of a narrative film, yes. Mm -hmm. And so it, it ended with kind of a, a hint that there could be more. Is, is, is there gonna be more to this story? I thought about it. You know, there was one point where I thought, well, I could shoot, because um, this door could lead anywhere. And I have a friend um, there that, who's Japanese and she has two little girls who are Japanese. And I thought, wouldn't it be so interesting if, she, you know, one of them ended up in that family where they couldn't speak the language again. I, I, it was one of the things that I played with was not being necessarily to understand the language of someone else, but to get what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the reasons why I didn't subtitle it because I felt like I wanted the audience to feel a little lost in the language the same way the kids did. And none of yeah. it was so complicated that you couldn't figure out even if you don't speak the language at least in my estimation yeah that, and, that, was, a, um, that so, was a good call thanks very good call and you you do speak french as well correct i do speak french it's a sort of like close to my heart the whole francophone and france and 1920s and it just sort of all came together in this film i mean it has a lot of flavor of me to it um what do you have coming up then more directing are you going to get back into series work Absolutely. I, I mean, what, where I am sort of aiming is I, I would like to be a working director. Um, having kind of caught the bug, I've made my living as an actor for over 20 years. And so that's still right now going to be my bread and butter, I think, for some, although right now it's not going to be my bread and butter, but uh, that's, I don't know how the film industry comes back. I think we're all reeling, trying to figure out how we do any of this same as musicians people you know who are in professions that really rely on crowds and um so i don't know what the future holds voice work i can still do i have a booth at home um and i think so i have a feature film that i've been signed on to direct called evil eye we are still you know sort of mucking our way through pre-production right now trying to figure out when we could go into i guess i would call it more pre-pre-production um and still with the hope that we might shoot it in October, which is when we were originally aiming. So having a feature film awaiting me has kept my director brain going. And, you know, I'm watching lots of horror films right now because it is a genre film. I have that. I have, um, you know, I'm taking a lot of meetings over this time uh for other things in in for example they make a lot of uh, television movies up here so that's certainly something i'm looking at and my own films i still have my two little shorts that i wanted to shoot and i have a, a series a pilot that i wrote and a series i've been developing and i'm out pitching that and so you know it's always a matter of having a lot of irons in the fire and seeing what comes to fruition first yeah you know you mentioned the current conditions and all and, and a lot of Comic cons and conventions have had to cancel, but do you uh, uh, hit the circuit for that a lot? I do. In fact, I had just come home in February from Brussels Comic Con, and I came home really very sick. Uh, I don't know, you know, my test came back negative for coronavirus, but it was so f much after the fact that I, I still have a lot of questions about that. Uh, it scared me a lot flying home and being really sick and thinking, man, I was just in a space with tens of thousands of people. And if I do have this, all these people who came through my line, who came to my photo ops, uh, it was a scary proposition and something that I had thought of previously in terms of just regular sick, not this kind of crazy virus sick. Uh, so I, I don't know how we do these things. I know some people are floating much as the way that you guys have had to pivot in film festivals doing kind of virtual conventions and there have been a few that have happened. I think it's not the same fan experience for people as meeting someone in flesh and blood. It just isn't the same. Um, we'll do what we can in the meantime and, and I guess we're all just hoping that there'll be a vaccine and we can move on and, and go back to being the social creatures that we are. Definitely. I mean, not only, you know, one thing that this has done is, is been a boon to self creators, uh, people who do a lot of stuff at home. And, uh, you know, in your case, uh, if you have a small crew, uh, you can go out and still shoot a short film, 
uh, with a limited number of people, but like those larger scale things and comic cons and movie theater experiences are going to be limited for at least a while. Well, and even just the the most regular television series trying to shoot with an average crew of 80 to 120 people and background and you know obviously hair and makeup is right in your face if you're doing a scene with another actor how do you play a married couple how do you play a couple that's being intimate how do you play somebody who's fighting you know how are you within two meters of anybody and how do you shoot that i, I don't know but i do know that the film industry is endlessly innovative and uh, if they if anybody can come up with a solution they're already working on it so well, hopefully things will start opening back up here again safely, not too soon. <laughs> I'm not going out in the first wave, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no, uh, no. I, could, I could be out today getting a haircut that I so desperately need, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, if I was 25, maybe I would go out in the, first, um, in the first wave, but I had previously been hospitalized for a respiratory thing. I've got little kids, and I, it's just a risk I'm not willing to take personally. Yeah. We're looking to see more from you. Are you going to make more short films in the meantime? I think so. I mean, I, it would behoove me to have those little pieces. It was just something I had wanted to do. I wrote two little films to kind of test some interesting shots that I was thinking of and to put something a little bit grittier and more narrative together. And, uh, and then this happened. I was right in the midst of it. Um, so I think you will see that. It will depend a lot on how things go with this feature because obviously to some degree that feature will kind of put itself in line in front of those as a you know, paying legitimate out there in the world job, which isn't to say that my short film stuff would not be legitimate, but you understand what I'm yeah. saying. So it will just depend a lot on that, but I might end up, there's a, a one I wrote in quarantine that I know I can shoot without needing people. And I was saying earlier that I have all my stuff now. You know, I have my gimbal. I can shoot in 4K. I have a light. I have a mic. I have the stuff. I have lenses that I got from Moment. And um, so I think if I can't go back to work, it's very likely that that will be the first thing that I shoot. So what all did you do on The Girl? You wrote, directed? I did all that. I mean, I had a producer, Ashley Alexander, who uh, was a godsend for me. Uh, and... But, you know, I wrote it, I produced it, I directed it, I chose everything that you saw on camera. Um, I found the locations, I, well, uh, I, Alan Bartolik actually helped me with, you know, putting us in Central Park. That's not necessarily where I would have gone, but he made that happen as he can because he's a locations manager extraordinaire. Um, but yeah, all the costumes, I literally sewed all the beads on the little French girl's dress. I all of it, all the costume work. I sat with uh, Stella with her little sweater that had the crown on it that I found. It was actually a Juicy Couture uh, sweater. And so I had to stitch rip Juicy Couture off there and a huge thing like this off the back. That took me three hours just to stitch rip that, you know? Um, all the little, the thing that the key is on. I made that stand. I made the little pedestal. I, I made the little key thing. I drilled the holes in the cabinet. I found, you know, like every piece of it was, was me. You do it all, and you had a uh, found a great location that house. That was a, you know, <laughs> that was an extraordinary thing. I just happened to have a friend who has a giant, beautiful mansion, and was kind enough to let me shoot that. And it just had the right feel for the 1920s feel that I was going for. And he had those weird little doors, those <laughs> strange little um, kind of cubby spaces that I didn't even know about when I originally asked him if I could shoot there so I just felt like it was absolutely the place where we were supposed to shoot yeah it was meant to be and uh, it's a great film and uh, we would love to I, I know you've got a big feature you're working on and probably more television in your future but any more uh, genre films short films that you make we'd love to see more I will absolutely send them your way. I'm so delighted to have received these awards thank you so much and thank you to everybody that played a part in that on your team and on mine well, congratulations, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Stay well. You too. Thanks.